Hello everybody and welcome to this new video. So today I'm going to speak about the law of large number. It is one of the most famous results that you can find in any textbook in probability. But today I'm going to show you a very very simple and elegant proof. And it is not involved. It just uses the dominated convergence theorem. You don't need any mark of inequality. You don't need martingale. You don't need anything. Only one theorem is needed. The dominated conversion theorem. So let's go. But what is a law of large number? I know what is a large number. A large number is this. This is a large number. But the law of large number is something different. It's a theorem. Let's look at it. So the strong law of large number here can be stated as follows. So you have xi which are iid random variables and you assume that the expectation of the absolute value of xi is, lo is less than infinity, then you have that the limit of the average over a sample of uh, uh, n terms, so it is 1 over n, the sum from 1 to n of xi, this average will converge to the expectation of xi almost surely. So actually we're going to prove that under uh, the assumption that expectation of x1 is zero. And if you assume this, then of course what you are going to prove is that the limit, if you call this quantity x bar n, the limit of x bar n is actually zero, almost surely. Okay, so this is the claim. We are going to follow a pass uh, which, is, uh, which has been uh, given by Bernard de Lyon. He made some uh, lecture notes about dynamical system and we just adapt uh, this very basic adaptation of this uh, proof to this particular situation. So the proof is based on this lemma, so you have yi which are iid, the yi not, are not the, the xi, because you assume that, of course, the absolute value of y1 is less than infinity, but you assume that the expectation of y1 is strictly positive. Then, as soon as you have the expectation of y1, which is positive, then the limit of the average over a sample of size n of the yi is larger the lim inf of this uh, average is larger than zero so this is a result which is also a normal sure result and before proving the lemma let's see how this lemma will imply the, the law of large number so remember that in the law of large number you have the x which are such that x1 is of uh, expectation zero so let's uh, set yi as xi plus epsilon and in that case uh, the result of the lemma since you have then yi which is epsilon which is strictly positive then the result of the lemma says that the lim inf of the y bar n which is lim inf of x bar n plus epsilon larger than zero, larger or equal to zero. And if you can do that with xi, you can do that also with minus xi, because the expectation of minus xi is also zero. So you will get, by applying again the lemma to minus xi, the lim inf of minus x bar n is also larger than zero. And knowing that the lim inf of minus is minus the lim sup, then you can bound the lim inf and the lim sup between minus epsilon and epsilon. And since it is true for any epsilon, then the result we are done, the result of the law of large number is proved. Okay. Now we understand that we have to prove the lemma. So let's prove the lemma. So let's start with some notation. You have ln, which is the infimum of the partial sum between 1 and n. 
L infinity is the infimum of the SK from 1 to infinity. And you have an event here, which is A. And what you want to show is that A, which is actually the fact that L infinity is equal to minus infinity. You want to show that P of A, actually P of A, is equal to 0. So why you want to show that P of A is equal to 0? So let's look at this. Let's go here. P of A is equal to 0. So it implies that L uh, infinity is strictly larger than minus infinity, almost surely. And this will imply what? Since you have Sn, which is larger than L infinity, what you can do actually is to take uh, to divide by n and take the lim inf, the lim inf on n. And since you have the assumption that L infinity is strictly larger than minus infinity, then this will be larger than zero. It is actually equal to zero if this is less than infinity. If it is between minus infinity and plus infinity, so you divide by n, you get you will get something which is zero. Okay. So if you, if it's equal to plus infinity, of course, when you divide by n, it's plus infinity. But in any case, it's larger than zero. Actually, the, the case plus infinity is not uh, cannot be uh, happens with probability one. But anyway, okay. So uh, now you 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 look at the shift operator, which is theta, and the first identity is this one. So this identity. Just to understand how where it comes from. Let's look at here. So Ln is infimum between y1, y1 plus y2 here, y1 plus y2 plus yn. And then what you can do is to take out all the y1, which are in all the sums. And when you take it out, what remains is the infimum between 0, y2, and y2 plus yn. So it is just if you just focus on here it is just uh, as if you have shifted the the y you have only uh, you start with y2 instead of starting with y1 and uh, the last term is just the sum of n minus one terms okay so this can be written formally here you have y1 here and the infimum of l n minus one, it means that you you will take the infimum over uh, n minus one partial sums, and you shift, and you use your shift operator theta. But of course, what you know is that l n by definition, because it is the infimum of S k between one to n, l n is non-increasing, meaning that l n minus one is larger than l n. So you will get this inequality and this inequality. If you look at the definition of the negative part, it is minus the negative part of uh, ln of theta. So now you put on the same side uh, ln and ln minus of theta. You will get this plus this and y1 is smaller than the sum of these two terms and you can multiply by the indicator of a where a is here so now what you can do is taking the expectation on both sides of the inequality so the expectation is smaller than the expectation of this plus this and here you will use also the fact that 1a is almost surely equal to 1a of theta. Just to, sh to see that, let's do the following. 
So you know that uh, A is the fact that the infimum of y1, y1 plus y2, plus yn, and so on, is equal to minus infinity. But this quantity is exactly y1 plus the infimum y2 plus yn is minus infinity. And what you know is that expectation of y1 is less than infinity. So it means that the probability of y1 being a real number is equal to uh, 1. So that means that uh, the event A and the event uh, that uh, B, which is the infimum of y2 y2 plus yn and so on so here it is and so on so it means that Okay, so this event A and B are such that the probability of 1A is equal to 1B is equal to 1, okay? Just because, uh, since you know that with probability 1Y1 is just a real number, and the fact that you have this infimum, which is minus infinity, will imply that the infimum of y2 and so on will be equal also to minus infinity. So this is the expression of that. And then when you have this, you have just a shift here, which can be uh, uh, expressed like this, just because the yi are iid. So if you shift uh, with the time index and you take the expectation of a function of the whole sequence, then you get exactly the same thing. And then you will look at this, ln plus ln minus. And it is actually the positive part of ln. So it is ln plus. That is, what is the positive part of ln plus, of ln? It is, by definition, ln plus, it is the max, the minimum, oh, the maximum, sorry, <laughs> between 0 and ln, okay? So it is something which is positive. And now, if you are in a situation where you have a uh, you multiply ln plus by 1a. 1a is the event is that the older sk are equal to minus infinity. No. Uh, 1a is the fact that the infimum of the sk is equal to, to minus infinity. So uh, in that case, what will you get with <coughs> ln so remember that you have ln which is decreasing and a is the fact that l infinity which is the limit of the ln is minus infinity so you have uh, what you will get is 1a of ln plus is 1 the limit of ln is minus infinity and you have ln plus and this quantity would be converged to, of course to zero because if ln goes to minus infinity so it means that the maximum between ln and zero will be zero eventually and you have also that ln plus 
is smaller just because um, of the fact that ln is non-increasing to this quantity which is y1 plus and the expectation of y1 plus is less than infinity so these two conditions the convergence here and the domination by something which is integrable allows you to apply the dominated convergence theorem and also apply actually in this situation the monotone convergence but you have to, to, to pay attention that you have something here which is uh, non-increasing and not non-decreasing so finally this converges to zero so it means that the expectation of uh, 1a of y1 is smaller than zero and now you will get a contradiction because you have the expectation of 1a of y1 is zero and remember that you have also uh, p of So you have also a uh, probability of 1a is equal to 1a composed with theta. So you replace here 1a by 1a of theta. And actually by replacing here you have something which depends on y2 and so on. So you get by independence of the y that the expectation of the product is the product of the expectation and now to end the proof we'll do once again the replacement of 1a of theta by 1a and now you will get something which is larger or equal to zero and something which is strictly larger than zero by uh, assumption so if you want that this product of two terms is smaller or equal to zero, then necessarily this quantity here is equal to zero. Because you know that it is larger or equal to zero, and to get something which is non-positive, uh, uh, you must have that this quantity is equal to zero, which finishes the proof. So it's a very elegant proof. It's a bit tricky, of course, but if you look at uh, the the arguments, they are very simple. There are only maybe one, two, three, four, five, uh, around ten lines here, and you just uh, use the dominated convergence theorem. So that's a very, very nice uh, lemma, a very nice proof of the law of large number. Thank you for your attention. Now we are done with the law of large number. But we don't say that the other proofs, which may be longer, are less interesting. Sometimes a proof is interesting because it can uh, give you the idea of extending the results or so on. And uh, so just try to read all the proofs. They are all interesting, even if this one is the shortest that I know.